Hey everyone, this is Nitro. So, since I have videos covering Bozel and Bernhard from the most recent Focus Banner, I thought I should do a video on the last character from the Focus Banner, which is Alte Muller, the flying tank. So this video is going to talk about how to build your Alte Muller properly. Now, we're going to begin as the very first thing, and I'm going to talk about his soldier boost before I get into anything else. Because for Alte Muller, this part is an incredibly important uh, explanation of how to use him. So, by himself, Alte Muller gives a soldier boost of plus 15% hit points and plus 15% attack. Okay. In addition, let's take a look at his bonds and what effect they have. So, Alte Muller's bonds, if I bring it up, the first bond, like everyone else, can increase all stats by up to 10%. And then his third bond increases hit points and attack. So, this third bond maxes out at 15%, so that's an additional 15% hit points, 15% attack. The total of all these additions means that Alte Muller increases hit points by 40%, attack by 40%, defense by 10%, and finally, he increases magic defense by 10%. This kind of soldier boost is actually the exact same as Leon, 40-40-10-10. Okay? It's not a tank soldier boost because, well, increasing attack right there means it's not meant for tanks. Most tanks increase hit points and defense. They don't increase attack. So that right there already defines, in many ways, Alte Muller's role. So Alte Muller is not really meant to be a tank. He can be your tank for like the mid game stages, but towards the end game stages, where the enemies do more and more and more damage, the fact that he doesn't increase his soldier's defense means that his soldiers are not likely to basically tank enough damage so that Alte Muller himself will not take any damage. Right? If he gets which means he's likely to get two shotted by most enemies he faces. <coughs> so just for a quick comparison, let me bring up the most common tanks in this game and the way their stats are laid out in terms of soldier boost. And here we go. So you see here that Alte Muller is 40% hit points, 40% attack, 10% defense, 10% magic defense. Let in, right, 35% hit points, so that's comparable, but he also has 35% attack as opposed to 10%. Grenier as well, less hit points, 20%, but he does have the 35% defense as well. Grenier is kind of, but with that said, Grenier is not considered a top tier tank in the first place. And this is actually the reason, because he's not boosting hit points enough. He boosts his attack, or sorry, he bo yeah, because he's boosting attack more than he does the hit points. Next is Vargas, which is one of the top tier tanks. 40% hit points, 35% defense. And then Freya is pretty much the same. 35% hit points, 40% defense. And finally, Juggler, 40% hit points, 35% attack, 35% uh, defense. So, this chart really shows that you know all the all the good tanks increase hit points dramatically and defense dramatically. None of them really increase hit points. All right, so let's get back into the game now. So, the very fact that his soldier boosts are set up in such a way already defines Alte Muller's role which is not really as your main tank character. Now with that said, we'll talk about you know, his talents, his skills, and finally about his equipment. <coughs> so, now that we've said that Alte Muller is not a tank, it really means that his class has to be the flyer class for him to be truly effective because he'll be a damage dealer, as opposed to a tank character. However, you do have to go into his Lancer class, because in his Lancer class, in Grand Marshal, is where the Tactical Mastery skill is. And anyone who is using Alte Muller in the first place would be using him to support Leon. So you need to get Tactical Mastery, no matter what, because Tactical Mastery allows all Strategic Masters to basically ignore the terrain because it's all treated as planes. And in addition, if the terrain adds defense, which is mountain tiles, walls, and forest tiles, 
the damage dealt in battle is increased by 15%. So it's actually, really, it is one of the best faction buffs. In fact, this faction buff is what truly makes this game Leon Grisser. Because without uh, Ultimate Muller's faction buff, Leon can barely move on a lot of maps. Especially, let's say, the Rocky map, when you're fighting Aniki Rocky. He can barely move there at all, because there's so much mountains and so much water. But with Ultimate Muller's faction buff, suddenly, Leon will treat all the water, all the mountains, all the forests as if they were plains. And so Leon will be able to move freely. <coughs> so, that means Ultimate Muller, if you're going to use him seriously, you need to get both his Grand Marshal class, so that he has the faction buff, and then after that, go into Dragon Knight and Dragon Master, so that he is a flyer who can have high mobility and be a secondary damage dealer, due to his soldiers providing plus attack. Alright, so we've talked about his classes. Let's quickly mention his talent, and then talk about the skills. His talent is that before entering battle, his attack increases by a certain percentage, and the damage he takes is decreased by a certain percent. And it lasts three turns, and it can be stacked up to three times. So basically, the more times he fights, the tougher he is, and the more damage he deals. Mind you, the more he fights, the you know, the less soldiers he has, and the more likely he is to die. So it's a talent that it strengthens him for sure, right? Because this does last; it does stack up to three times. So the more he fights, you know, the stronger he is. But um, it's not exactly; it doesn't exactly make him an uh, invincible tank. Let's put it that way. In terms of damage reduction, for example, characters like Vargas have talents that you know, reduce damage by 18% right from the start. And this is just a 3-star Vargas, by the way. So Vargas, would, for example, would already take far less damage on the first hit, whereas Ulti Muller would need to build up his damage, uh, de his damage decreases. So, yeah, just, it just shows that Ulti Muller, not exactly an amazing tank, especially at the end game stages, but he can function as a tank during the mid game stages. <coughs> and now, let's talk, talk about his skills. Skills wise, Ulti Muller is actually one of the more interesting characters. In fact, he's a lot like Bernhard because he has a lot of skills that are all very useful. <laughs> Almost annoyingly so. It's to the point where it's, ve it's frequently very hard to choose uh, the proper skill combo for him. Ulti Muller, he starts off with the skill Raging Thunder, and it's a skill that has a 2 turn cooldown and does 1.5 times damage to the enemy. In addition, it grants a buff, Wind Ride, where as long as Ulti Muller's hit points is above 50%, so that includes the soldier's hit points by the way, as long as hit points is above 50%, damage taken from melee attacks is decreased by 15%, and it lasts 2 turns. So, he has to basically attack to get a damage decrease. Um, so this is already a very interesting skill. 1.5 times damage is actually quite high, and yeah, it gives him damage reduction, which is very, very nice. So this is, this is a great attack skill that he starts off with. And then in terms of useful skills, he really has six other skills that are useful in his two main class lines. From Hawk Knight, he gets reinforcement which is after he acts, he restores 20 unit hit points. Cherry has the same skill. Most good attackers have a way to restore hit points, right? Either through reinforcements or let's say Leon has chivalry that does the same thing. So there is Hawk. There is the reinforcement skill, which is very, very useful. In the general line, he unlocks parry. And parry gives one guard range. It's the same skill that Bernhardt has, right? And I showed how useful, you know, a parry skill, one guard rage can be in Guild Wars. And it only has one cost, so quite a useful skill to have. And then from the Grand Marshal line, he unlocks the critical faction buff, of course, and also strong arm, which is a true guard skill, right? Yeah. By itself, the passive is that it guards one friendly opponent, and then when active, when used, it gives a two guard range, and it also gives a barb where he can deal fixed damage to the enemy. So, it's a true guard skill, pretty good. You really can't complain about it. Although, uh, 
it can be hard to fit in because of tactical master being so important and using two points, while strong arm also needs two points. So, other than those two, Dragon Knight unlocks Defense Command, which is a passive that de increases the defense of all friendly units with two blocks by 10%. It would be nice to be actually be able to fit this into his skill choices, but practically speaking, the fact that it requires two points makes it almost impossible to fit in, right? You'd always want the faction buff, then you'd probably want an attack skill rather than defense command. So unfortunately, although this skill could be very useful, it's almost impossible to use. So let, finally, let's talk about Dragon Master. And Dragon Master also has two very useful skills. Gale is a one-cost skill that gives him a 20% chance to act again. Yeah. Yes, it's only 20% chance, but the fact that you can act again is such a huge bonus that it's a very useful skill to have. And Dragon Breath, it's a skill that does AoE attack to enemies within two blocks of him. So it's 0 0.36 times AoE damage, and it debuffs each target. Right? In addition, just like his attack skill Raging Thunder, after this is used, as long as his points is above 50%, he takes 15% less damage. So, great skill. The one limiting factor on this is that it has a 5 turn cooldown. So, that 5 turn cooldown, by design, practically makes this a PvP only skill. Where Ulti Muller can be your third AoE striker, potentially. Let's say you have Bozo for AoE, Lana for AoE, and then, then Ulti Muller for a third AoE strike. And three AoE, 3 AoE strikes, theoretically, should do enough damage to kill off your opponents in one go. <coughs> so yeah, that's Ulti Muller's skills. We have his Raging Thunder, we have Reinforcement, we have Parry, we have two more in Grand Marshal, and then two more useful ones in Dragon Master. So, that's seven skill choices in total, and you only have three slots to fit them in. That makes Ulti Muller very, very hard to design in general, as a result. I guess your usual setup would be two points for Faction Buff, right? Then the second one is two points into either Raging Thunder for an, a single target attack skill, Strong Arm for a tank skill, or Dragon Breath for an AoE skill. And then the third skill slot, which would be the one point cost one, you still have three choices, which is Parry for a one guard range tanking skill, you have Reinforcements for the self healing, or you have Gale for Act Again. So, yeah. Hard to design. You can pick the skills that you prefer. I'm not going to really give a suggestion at this time because my Ulti Muller still has not been uh, fully upgraded yet and I haven't used them enough to, you know, give my suggestion. Just pick the skills you like, you know, if it works out, stick with it. Now, I will also mention though, for Guild Wars, you may choose not to bring uh, the faction buff because in that, in Guild Wars, faction buff, you can have someone else do the faction buff. So in that case, you may bring, let's say, Lance to be the faction buffer, and then Ulti Muller will be, let's say, the tanky version. So in that kind of situation, I would presume you would use Strong Arm for the main tank skill, Raging Thunder or uh, Dragon Breath for the attack skill, which decreases the damage she takes, and then. For the last one point skill, you would choose either Reinforcements to self heal or Gale, right? You'd probably choose Reinforcements if you have Raging Thunder. You'd probably choose Gale if you use the Dragon Breath. So, yeah, that would be how Ultimiller is designed in terms of his skills. And do note that you should probably do all this while he is in his flying class. So, he'll be a flying tank as opposed to a Lancer tank. Alright, so we've talked about his skills. Let's talk about his soldiers. And from the training grounds, he has access to these three soldiers. The Gargoyle, the Cyclops, and the Dark Centurion. Okay. In all honesty, my personal opinion is all three of these aren't really his recommended soldiers. If you were to use a tanky Ulti Muller, you would probably want to use the Phallus units because they decrease physical damage that they take. Right? 
the Dark Centurions, they add like a barb effect of doing additional damage. But when you're a tank, you want to survive. So you probably want Phalanx instead. And then if you were using him as a flyer, rather than Gargoyles, which are more attack, you would probably want Vampire Bats. And the reason you would probably want Vampire Bats rather than Gargoyles is because you're likely to have high-level Vampire Bats if you use Leon. Remember, Vampire Bats are shared with Leon. Leon uses the same unit. Garg very few uh, you know, top-tier characters use Gargoyles. So you are less likely to have high-level Gargoyles than you are to have high-level Bats. So yeah. So, best unit overall for Ulti Muller, definitely the Vampire Bats, which he unlocks via Dragon Master. And then his best tanking unit, if you were to use him as a 3 range tank, would be Phalanx. You just have to remember that if you bring Phalanx, he's down to 3 movement, because he'll be limited by these Phalanx units. So even though he himself has 5 movement, as long as you bring Phalanx, he's down to 3. And yeah, that's literally it for his soldiers. So, at this point, let's talk about Ulti Muller's equipment. Now, if your Ulti Muller is still in his Lancer class, like mine is, well, his equipment doesn't matter. You would really be using him for Guild Wars, and then in that case, you might as well just go to your tank, remove your tank's equipment, and then equip it on Ulti Muller, and then use him as a tank for Guild Wars that way. But, if you were going to use Ulti Muller and develop him with his, you know, double class, so he has both his, both, uh, Dra Grand Marshal and Dragon Master, then he would need a specific set of equipment. And his set of equipment is actually quite interesting. Okay, let me just bring up the spreadsheet quickly. Let's see. Alright. So, I'm going to open the spreadsheet for about SSR gears in Negrisser Mobile. Here we go. So, let's begin with the weapons. Now, Ulti Muller's equipment is interesting because equipment-wise, you want to build him as a flying tank in general, which means you want to give him items that add defense whenever possible, as opposed to attack value per se. So, for example, for weapon, most people are currently giving him Ragnarok because, you know, Ragnarok gives incredibly high amount of attack, the highest attack value of any weapon, right? A smaller amount of hit points, good attack percentage, and it also deals one times damage to the enemy before initiating combat. So it is considered the best axe. Um, however, my personal opinion is it's actually a currently a great weapon when people don't exactly have end game stage equipment and uh, Ultimate Muller could one shot targets. But towards the end, as you keep using him, you're going to start to realize that Ultimate Muller isn't exactly a one shot target character. Despite his high attack value, despite having Raging Thunder, he struggles to one shot characters. And let me just jump back into the game to explain why. Okay. And the reason is actually quite simple. First of all, okay, it's actually his attack growth rate. Because his attack growth is only A. The characters who are the one-shot guys, which is Cherry or Leon, they have an attack growth of S. So they end up with a higher attack value than Ulti Muller does. The second reason is that from what I recall properly, Ulti Muller's class masteries from his General and Grand Marshal line don't add that much attack. There's 15% attack there and 7 attack here, right? So it's not like plus 25 plus 25, which I think is what Cherry and Leon get. Let me quickly bring up Leon as an example. So, Leon's class mastery. Strike Master plus 25. Oh no, I was wrong. Royal Knight is plus 15. Okay, so I was a little bit off there. But there is more attack from Grand Knight and Highlander. Because both of these offer plus 12 attack as opposed to plus 7. So, in the end, what it really comes down to is Ulti Muller ends up with a bit less attack than Cherry and Leon has. And that 
tiny bit is actually usually enough to prevent him from one-shotting targets. First, Ragnarok is not as important for him because you don't expect him to one-shot enemies. In addition, I should also mention this. The Flyer Branch, let me just open the Flyer Branch quickly. The skill here, Amphibious Raid, is that when attacking units with 100% hit points, Flyers and Aquatic Attack and Defense is increased by 20%. Well, Ragnarok does damage to the enemy before combat begins. So that means your units, your soldiers, in this case the Vampire Bats, are already losing 20% attack and defense before combat begins. So yeah, I mean, it's just the combination of these little factors makes it so that Ulti Muller has a tougher time one-shotting targets. And so I actually don't recommend Ragnarok as his final weapon. Instead, so, in that case, which weapon would be best for Ulti Muller? Well, let's take a look. Sin since Ulti Muller is not expected to one-shot enemies, then his best weapon, or sorry, not his best weapon, his best, yeah, sorry, his best weapon, I'm just trying to bring up the uh, Google Doc but it's actually not showing up for some reason right now. So give me a moment. Aha, here we go. All right, so his best, given that he's not supposed to one-shot targets, his best weapon is then going to be one that applies a debuff because you're assuming the enemy survives in combat. So what are the weapons among the lances and axes that apply debuffs? And there's actually two choices. The first one is Peacemaker. Which, nullify, which has a 50% chance to nullify passive skills. So that's one option if you want the higher attack and lower hit points. The other option would be Cursed Lens. Okay. In this case, you're getting more magic defense and defense when you attack, and you have a 50% chance to apply both silence and cannot heal to the enemy. So you, in this, we're using Cursed Lens, you're giving up even more attack because the Cursed Lance does not apply plus 10% attack the way uh, Peacemaker does, for example. But, and it also has less attack value, 85 versus 117. But you can apply two debuffs as opposed to just one. So, yeah, my personal suggestion is at absolute endgame stages, choose between Cursed Lance or Peacemaker, oddly enough. Ragnarok is still a great weapon for him. Like, if you don't have a level 50 Cursed Lance, but you have a level 50 Ragnarok, by all means, give him the Ragnarok. Because Ragnarok still does a lot of damage, you know? You can't go wrong with damage, but uh, for absolute endgame, let's say, especially for PvP, applying these debuffs on an enemy that you know will survive is probably more important than just a bit more damage when you know the enemy lives anyways. So that's it for his final weapon. Next, let's talk about armor. And armor, it's pretty straightforward. As for PvE, last rates, because last rates reduces damage taken by 40% for the first attack you take. Just the best PvE armor there is. If you're talking about PvP, where you're definitely going to take damage before you get hit, let's say by enemies with Ragnarok or AoE attacks, uh, in that case, last rates really won't kick in. So for PvP, the best armor may be Gargoyle Jacket. Because whenever you're attacked, your defense is increased by 15%. So yeah, you would choose between Last Knight or Last Rite or Gargoyle Jacket. I would say this is the best for PvP, or sorry, for PvE, Last Rite, for PvP, Gargoyle Jacket. So next, after armor, is Helmets. And Helmets is actually pretty straightforward. Um, I would say you would go with either Loki's Mask, because again, whenever you're attacked with a melee attack, your defense is increased by 15%, or you go with Jorman Gandir's Eye, because that one has a chance to apply a debuff to reduce the enemy, the damage enemies deal. So either one, Loki's Eye, Loki's Mask, or Jorman Gandir's Eye. And then finally, for his accessory, I would say the best one for him is Wing Shin Guards. 
because increased attack, increased defense, right? The skill has applies attack by 8% and also has a chance to increase his defense whenever he's attacked by 10%. So it's just useful in all situations for him, pretty much. And yeah, that's pretty much it for everything I want to talk about for Altai Muller. Oh, there is one final thing that I should note about Altai Muller, and this is actually linked to his soldiers. Let me just jump back into the game for this final point. Now, angels have this magic damage uh, reduction, right? So, units who have angels, which is Leon and Cherry, of no are the most two most common users, they don't take that much magic damage as a result, because the angels can reduce that damage. In addition, angels also have very, very high magic defense values. However, that's not the case for vampire bats. Vampire bats, their defense and magic defense is the exact same value, and they don't reduce magic damage. So vampire bats are actually very, very vulnerable to magic attacks, which then makes Ulti Muller very, pretty easy to kill by magic attacks as well. So just an interesting note that I want to bring up and bring to your attention, because you know when you use Leon or Cherry, you can be confident that magic attacks won't hurt you much, but that's not the case for Leon. Le or, that's not the case for Ulti Muller. Ultimate Muller will take full damage from magic attacks, so just be careful in that sense. Alright, so that's everything I wanted to say about Ultimate Muller at this point. Um, I guess the l very, very last thing to mention would be the enchant you want on Ultimate Muller, right? And wow, Ultimate Muller's enchant is pretty flexible, I have to say. Because, you know, he is a flying tank, so he could use tank enchants, right? But at the same time, he's also a damage dealer, because he has attack skills. So he could use attack enchants, like Full Moon or Rough Sea. So... The enchant you want to settle on for him? Honestly, it's... <laughs> it's truly hard to say. Um, your personal preference. If you feel like you're going to use a flying tank more often, give him hard rock. Give him steel. You know? If you feel like you're going to attack with him, give him rough sea or full moon. And that's it. So this is everything that I can think of for Ulti Muller that would be relevant to how you build him. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video useful. And on that note, Nitro out.